Welcome to the March to a Million podcast with Greg DuPont, founder of the Wealth Solutions Network. In this podcast, Greg shares his journey to positively impact one million lives by creating an army of financially minded attorneys who embrace an expanded role in their clients' lives. Greg and his guests challenge the status quo in the legal profession and the financial services industry and show attorneys how they can improve their lives, provide greater value to their clients, and experience greater professional satisfaction. Join us in this movement and strengthen your business by learning how to solve your clients' most pressing financial problems. Hello and welcome to another March to a Million podcast with my good friend Greg here. Today, we are going to go over the third pillar Okay. And the third pillar is wealth enhancement. Now here's very quickly. These podcasts aren't in a linear fashion. I want everybody to know that, that there are little things that Greg is going to be sprinkling in throughout this entire process to continue to give context and value to all of you listeners. So yes, we are talking about wealth pillar number three, but there have been some other podcasts that have happened before that. Greg, do you want to take a minute before we dive into this pillar to kind of highlight some of the things that we've already previously talked about so that if somebody's coming in at this episode, that we make sure that they go back and listen to the previous ones. Sure. Thanks. So first of all, Matt, I'm excited to be here today, continuing this journey. I'm a little fired up today. So uh, hopefully you can keep me in check. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had some time to reflect over the weekend as I got stuck in travels. So we'll we'll get back to that in a minute. But yeah, so you know what we're doing with these introductory podcasts are, are going through essentially what is part of the initial training and onboarding into the Wealth Solutions Network. And, and that training and onboarding focuses on six pillars of financial advocacy. Yeah. Uh, and you know, these are each of them are are patterns that I have seen over the years that each one, I believe, uh, will deliver tremendous value to the consumer, as well as each one of these pillars that fits into a practice niche for uh, the members of WSN uh, will deliver six figures to their practice. You know, so we talked about the first pillar, wealth management, uh, the second pillar, wealth preservation. And as we talk, we're going to go into wealth enhancement today. And we sprinkled in the financial advocacy mindset, which is kind of the overriding sixth pillar of all this. And as I mentioned during that conversation with Ben Glass, um, this is really the core of being a financial advocate, having that advocacy mindset and wishing to take that role of hero for your clients. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you did that, actually, because it's nice, you know, we're all almost halfway through, right, for people to really understand the deep philosophical overarching philosophy of what you're really trying to do with Wealth Solutions Network. Okay, so so here it is. This is pillar number three. There are three secrets, right? What's secret number one? Three, count of three, you know, (laughs) you know, most people that you're going to talk to, you're, they've done their savings journey. They, they are now in that spot where they are looking to retirement. And despite all of the Madison Avenue visions that we're being sold, you know, what do most people want at this point in life? It's not an expensive fishing boat. It's not expensive travel. It is travel. They've worked their whole life. They want to travel and those kind of things. But really, these cookie cutter images are not what people are focused on. They want peace. They want to know that the what they have worked so hard to get to this break in life, that it's going to go on uninterrupted. So that's really secret number one. They want to have a reasonable lifestyle, not this extravagant lifestyle, which is the reason that it's sold is so more people invest, right? Uh, so that's not what they're looking for. The secret is they want a simple lifestyle and they want to leave behind a legacy. Can you give us like a real life example there, because you just made a very big paradigm challenge, right? That I think is important to highlight here that, that what is being sold or taught or communicated in the world of marketing and television and advertisement and what retirement's supposed to look like. You just challenged that big time. Can you give us an example of somebody that you have worked with who maybe you even thought going in Greg, that they were going to want the big house and the big boat and the big car or the cars and, you know, the crazy Viking cruises every three months. Uh, And after the discussion, you had a different epiphany. 
Yeah, so it happens all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and really that image is what sold to the thirty and forty year olds. Oh, uh, this is what my future is going to be like. Uh, so I can continue to grind it out. But you know, I had three meetings yesterday with three different families, and, and each of them, you know, I start all of my conversations saying, "Hey, we may be here to talk about estate planning, but." I really want to bring as much value to this conversation as possible. So let's talk about what's really important. What's important about money to you. And no matter how hard I would interrogate, in the, you know, for us lawyers, uh, cross-examine um, the, the witness on what is it that they want in terms of vacations? You know, what does that look like? First of all, to a person, 99% of them have never really given themselves the time and space to think that through because they're just too busy doing the day-to-day. And those that have end up saying, you know, I, I just want to relax. I want to take a couple trips here and there. Maybe I'll get out to Florida or somewhere warm because we're here in Ohio. Yeah, but very few of them have expansive travel plans that are going to take these gazillions of dollars that Fidelity tells you after you save. They want to be with their family. That's the people that we work with. Yeah. That's the important thing for them. Family lifestyle and, and peace. Yeah. And so that ties into wealth enhancement. So that's, you know, the number one secret that you got to understand they're, they're past this savings kind of, mindset where they're plugging things away they just want to pres- preserve it and, and then you know the second secret about all this is folks this is just math at this point and that's what the computer's for that's what chat gpt is for that's what the ai is for it's math right it's not magic it's math you just need to be good at math and actually you don't need to be good at math you need to be good at communicating the results of the math Okay, that seems like a, a little bit of a cold statement. I'm going to push back with you a little bit there. That it's it's really all about the math. How elaborate? You, I, that seems because you just infused secret number one with substantial amount of emotion in reality, and then you just kind of pushed the brakes on that, bro. And you said, no, it's re- it's really about the math. So so explain, please. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's the communication of the math. That's the soft skill. That's what distinguishes you as a financial advocate from the teleservice representative at Fidelity. Mm -hmm. What's important to your clients? You know what their values are. How we deliver that, that delivery comes from the math. Okay. So it's how we translate the result of, of the math to influence and assist our clients. So let's talk about the math. What are we mathing here? So th- this is this is what I'm fired up about now, Matt. Because um, <laughs> the math, you know, this we're talking about savings, right? This is what it all comes down to. These people have worked for X years to save this amount of money to fuel their future, mm-hmm. to have that piece live that lifestyle, leave that legacy. Now, the math tells us what can be done, okay? Now, you know, you may have picked up, because you've been around the financial services industry a few years, Matt. Just a few. Yeah. Just a few. You know, it's all about influence, isn't it? That's what this whole, well, I think your company speaks to influence <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. Let me add that. Because the industry, you know, well, how is this structured by and large? Well, we have creators of financial product that influence distributors of financial product that then influence the consumer. And what we're doing as financial advocates is we're getting ourselves in between the influence of the institutions and the consumer. So that it's the consumer that is influencing the choice. Mm. We know what's going on. We know what they want. And then we look to the math. 
So when you're when you're looking at the math of the industry, let's talk, talk about the investment world, which is what most people are stuck in 401ks, right? Yep. And the the numbers, the math of investment world, um, shall we say, can be disingenuous. Uh, it's very polite. Yeah. yeah. I do have some type of uh, restrictions on what I say, right? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I learned early on in my journey that when I'm using modeling software that my company gave me, the choices of what are the parameters, the, the variables, quote unquote, what's the rate of return? It, I, I I did not have enough clarity early on, and and I was one of the successful ones to recognize how that skews things. Clarity gained over time. Now the industry still, by and large, hides behind the Monte Carlo simulation. Yes, they do. Which which in and of itself is a wonderful tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in it, for those that don't know what we're talking about here, well, Monte Carlo gets its name after where it was uh, designed to develop uh, to help, which was the gamblers, the gambling casinos, so the house doesn't lose, right, Matt? That's absolutely correct. And it's and it's also used to determine all kinds of probabilities, and it's all statistical analysis and all that kind of stuff. And and when I see people come into my office that have these projections from their financial advisors that say. Well, you have a 95 chance of success and 5% chance of non-success. And we have this lifetime uh, potential asset base of millions of dollars variance. The attorney in me says, well, how, how do I plan off of this stuff? Yeah. And, and that's just not knowing the math and being able to tighten that out. So when I talk about being fired up today, um, I have the wonderful opportunity, thanks to American Airlines, uh, to spend an extra day and a half in Washington, D.C. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, flight canceled on Friday afternoon, not out until Saturday night at what was to be 10. It wasn't 10. <laughs> but anyways. I had a friend of mine send me some podcasts to fill my time, mm-hmm. which uh, sent me down a rabbit path that, that that I really think that we need to talk about in the context of wealth enhancement. Okay. Because, you know, the whole core of the wealth enhancement uh, pillar is our clients have basically saved their money at this point. Mm-hmm. We now want to build upon that grow it to take care of inflation, to preserve lifestyle, preserve le- legacy, et cetera. And as we sit here in the summer of 2023, these assets for most of our clients are, you know, call it their fidelity accounts, their IRAs, 401ks. Um, as we talk about, they need to be building in insurance and, and annuities and those kind of things are part of it. But we are running headlong into a shitstorm of unprecedented magnitude in, in our economy. Uh, yeah. But the combination of artificial intelligence, the overextended country, the international over-reliance upon debt, and the demographic factors out there, we as advocates need to really grab a hold of that and do what we can to wake people up. Yeah. You know, so uh, you know, as I sit here today, I've got no idea what the solution is. You know, uh, uh, hopefully one of these days down the road, we're going to talk to somebody here in this podcast that um, is a proponent of, uh, of you know, having alternative currencies and Bitcoins as part of their savings model. Um, you know, but we have to understand, and this is where diversification is 
really comes into play because the current model of diversification, which is basically just asset classes within the same, yep. well, just bas- basically just different flavors of the same apples. Yep. Maybe we got a basket of oranges. Maybe. Maybe. But we got normally we got a, ba- a bushel of, of apples that uh, we got a John of gold and a whatever, right? So wealth enhancement going forward is being aware Mm -hmm. of these alternative true diversification assets, whether it is real estate or commodities or the insurance type of investments that we advocate about. uh, Yes, the market has to be part of this. Uh, and potentially down the road, you know, our friends, Bitcoin and those type of alternative currencies. Yeah. That is a very different uh, landscape of diversification that you're talking about than, than what most people are getting with their financial services professionals, right? It's that 60, 40 mutual fund and then bond split sort of stuff where it's really, you're just swimming in the same pond. You're not talking about actual asset classes that are real and distinct. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, part of the, what history tells us is that when these major disruptive forces come to play, mm-hmm. our stock market will collapse. Yeah. 40, 50%. It will. When? Who the hell knows? Yeah. And then it'll grow back. Yes, it will. It'll come, we'll come out the other side. You know, I am a long-term, very optimistic guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the changes in, in technology and the changes in healthcare, you know, we talked about, I'm going to live to 150. Yep. Uh, those, those are all great things that are going to come down the horizon. But, you know, part of true investment diversification, being able to put a floor on some of this. Yes. Take advantage of some growth opportunities as they come. But, I sure as like sure as hell would rather you know ride out the the transition, knowing that I've got a baseline coming out the other side, mm-hmm. ba- baseline of some kind of income, baseline of just protected value, so that I can enhance from that going forward. Mm. You and I have been in this long enough. Uh, where early, early in our careers, the uh, rate of return uh, that was projected uh, was really high when I first started paying attention to this. And then it went down to really, really low. And it's fascinating to me how fluid some of that stuff is. But long term, if you have that floor in place, everything changes. And to kind of put a button on what you're saying, it is all about the math. The math is the math. Math is an actual equation that's going to give you a specific output. And if you know how to do math in this way to truly enhance somebody's wealth, everything changes. Now, the last one is really specifically for uh, attorneys who are getting into the system because there is so much opportunity in their day-to-day practices to truly enhance somebody's overall wealth. So to take that away, will you? Well, nobody is talking to the consumer in the fashion that we have just laid it out. Nobody is going to be telling them that this is what real diversification looks like to protect you and your family. Yep. Why do I say that? Because, First of all, most people are not getting any advice. And those that are getting advice are getting it from <clears throat> their proprietary vendors. And you can't tell me uh, that there's any probability that a guy that's managing your 401k is going to tell you to take 10%, 20% of it and take it out of my management and put it over into Bitcoin or whatever, mm-hmm. which is the right decision for you and your family. So the financial advocate who is understanding of a role of being a protector and a hero is going to come in and say, Hey, okay, you've got enough. You've got enough to get your baseline right now. We don't know 
you know, I, I keep coming back to Donald Rumsfeld um, and the Gulf War. We have the known unknowns, known knowns, and the unknown unknowns. We can't handle those unknown unknowns. We don't know what's going to happen when this reset hits, but we do know the known risks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we can address those so that we have more resilience for those unknown unknowns. Mm-hmm. And that's what wealth enhancement is for a financial advocate, being able to come in and have that conversation, which the clients are not having. Uh, and I guarantee you uh, that when the spit hits the fan, uh, your clients are going to look at you as a hero for what you have done to help them. You know, we're not going to protect them from all of the stuff that's going to come down the pipe. Nope. But doing our level best. Yeah. Would you mind just giving us a, a, a short, quick example of how advocates who are this far into training or whatever uh, can start uncovering these opportunities, not just to have the conversation, but maybe some triggers, or are we going to talk about that in different pillars? So part of our overall uh, training and membership in WSN is, you know, we give people the the, the talking points, the scripts, but more appropriately, the confidence yeah. to know that they are stepping into this role uh, for their clients with this mission. You know, I, you know, I've started this march to a million uh, as positively impacting lives. Darn near, my my marketing team hates me because I keep changing these kind of things on them. But I'm darn near changing it to saving a million ha- families from financial devastation. Oh, wow. Okay. Because uh, cause what's on the horizon is so foreseeable. And for many people, taking a few actions, and these are the actions that we train in WSN, could be for them the difference between a, a bleak future and a happy future. All right. Uh, so if somebody's uh, listening to this and they haven't taken advantage of the WSN training, wh- where do they need to go? What do they need to do? How should they contact you so they can get moving forward? So they should, you know, the best way really at this point in time is to go to www.wellsolutionsnetwork.biz uh, and get get signed up for it. Uh Fairly soon here, we're going to have uh, some other things developed to, to make the path of entry a little bit easier. Uh, but uh, those are, uh, you know, as we build this out, this is uh, a work in progress. Uh, so sure. we're going to we're going to continue to refine how that goes and build out even better processes. And this is why you need to get in now, because you're going to be getting a lot of wonderful attention from the team at WSN and making sure that that we can help you really, truly be that financial advocate that you want. Greg, uh, anything else before we wrap up? Matt, I look forward to our next conversation. I'm hopefully not going to be traveling between now and then. <laughs> I know. I kind of liked you being a little fired up, my friend. It was good energy today. Uh, But at the same time, I hope that your travels are even more successful. All right, everybody, if you have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure that you do. If you know another person who really should be this advocate, share this podcast with them. It's super easy. All you have to do is hit that share button and make sure that you go to wellsolutionsnetwork.biz and you can go ahead and sign up and start getting the training for you to become your own financial advocate. So for Greg and all of us here, we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thank you for listening to the March to a Million podcast. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available and get in touch with our team by visiting our website at www.wealthsolutionsgroup.biz or give us a call at 614-432-8065. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wealth Solutions Network. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice from qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have.